Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. The Gospel proclaims the healing of the man born blind. After smearing the clay on the eyes of the man, Jesus said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. He washed as instructed and was able to see. It caused a stir. It did not sit well with the Pharisees because it was the Sabbath when no one should work or heal. They questioned the man and it ended with his expulsion from the synagogue. But Jesus sought the man and revealed himself to him. What the Lord said is a good reflection point. I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see might see and those who do see might become blind. What prevents us from recognizing the Lord in unexpected people and events? We pray that we may be illumined by the light of the world, Jesus our Lord. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not seen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ready, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with a horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord.
guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Though in the dark valley I fear no evil, for he is at my side. His rod and his staff give me shepherd there is nothing I shall want and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall shepherd there is nothing I A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. Seeing the Unseen This Sunday, our readings talk about sight and also the lack of sight, light and darkness. I think this is important, especially as we face all the confusing and uh, tragic events in our world that bring darkness. The Lenten season, which brings us closer to the darkness of Jesus' passion and death, enables us also to see. In the first reading, we are brought closer to the experience of Samuel who was directed by God to go to the house of Jesse. Why? For in the house of Jesse, God has chosen a future king. One of the sons of Jesse was chosen by God to be king of Israel. Samuel was sent to anoint this son of Jesse. Samuel went and started looking, and he saw some of the sons of Jesse. He concluded, ah, this must be the one, or this must be the chosen one, or this one will make a good king. But God said to him, no, not this one. Then a lesson that God gave to Samuel. Not as man sees, 
that God sees. You human beings don't see what God sees. For you, look at the appearances and you judge by appearances. But God sees the heart, which often is unseen by us. So by our, our lack of true sight and vision, we also lack right judgment. The great news is that Samuel obeyed God. He slowly, slowly tried to see what God sees by believing in God's direction and allowing God to direct his sight so that he will start to see what he first did not see. So we inquired, is there another son that you have? And Jesse said, oh, yes, the youngest, David. When David ar arrived, God saw. This is the one. And God told Samuel, this is the one, anoint him. Finally, Samuel sees as God sees. God sees what is humanly unseen, which is God's sight. And he anointed David as king. The Holy Spirit rushed to David. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us through the letter to the Ephesians that we are now supposed to be light, to be living in the light. That we are supposed to be light in the Lord. Aha, this is important. In darkness, we do not see. In darkness, we do not see, especially what the light of the Lord sees. So to be light in the Lord. And what is light in the Lord? To see what the world refuses to see. Justice, truth, kindness. These are the things that we all long for. But the world doesn't want to see that. That's why there is corruption. There is uh, a lot of injustice. There is a lot of violence. There is a lot of prejudice. We don't want to see what God sees. St. Paul tells us we are not anymore in darkness. We are supposed to be children of the light, light in the Lord. And we should see what God sees. And seeing what God sees, we, they should be part of our actions so that the world hopefully would see the light emanating from kindness, from justice and truth. See what is unseen to us, but see what God sees. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to John As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him? 
since he opened your eyes. He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord Seeing the unseen, we have been reflecting on how human sight sometimes fails us. We do not see what really matters. So there are many things that we do not see, but they are seen by God. So we are praying for this grace to see what is unseen to us humanly, but by the eyes of faith, we will hopefully see as God sees. This happened to Samuel in his uh, encounter with the sons of Jesse. He depended on his human way of seeing until this grace from God was received by him. And he saw what used to be unseen by him, David, the chosen one of God, to be king of Israel. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us that we are light in the Lord. And being light in the Lord, we are supposed to see what God wants us to see, but which the world, who prefers darkness, often refuses to see. Justice, truth, kindness. So let us be light in the Lord. In the Gospel from St. John, we are all, uh, in a way, familiar with the story of the man born blind who was given sight by Jesus. The encounter between Jesus and this man is, is really quite dramatic because the blind man could not see Jesus. He could hear Jesus and he obeyed Jesus. Jesus who uh, formed clay and put that clay on his eyes and asked him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So this man, unseeing physically Jesus, followed the words of Jesus and eventually saw. He obeyed the unseen Jesus, but in his heart he was beginning to see. He was beginning to see the mystery of this person. He was beginning to hear the wisdom of this person. Now began the drama. This blind man was questioned by the Pharisees, but he gave his testimony. He said, well, I used to be blind because his blindness was being questioned. In fact, even his parents were called to testify that he really had been born blind. They could not believe it, but he was steadfast in his testimony. I do not know this man, but this man did something which is extraordinary, which only God could do. So this man, whom I do not know, whom I have not seen physically, I know, I see that this man comes from God. For no one, no sinner, could do the work of God. The blind man slowly saw what was unseen by the world. Unfortunately, the Pharisees, who were physically able to see, were the ones who turned blind. Why? First, they saw the event happening on the Sabbath. 
So they concluded that whoever did this act, Jesus, could not have been sent by God, for no one would violate the Sabbath and still claim to be from God. They looked at the law, at least they looked at their interpretation of the law, not the law itself, but their interpretation of the law. Then came out this attitude. They saw in the blind man a sinner and a person of a low rank. You used to be blind. You, you, you are a sinner yourself. We are the experts. They did not see a brother. They did not see a witness to God's marvelous deeds. My dear brothers and sisters, the choice is before us. Will we be open to Jesus' light so that we will see even in the ordinary and surprising ways or events, persons in our lives, God's marvelous action and presence? Or will we be proud, self-righteous, condescending towards others and we remain blind? Please see the unseen, but which is very clear to God. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Have you found God conversing with you in your ordinary activities? Were you able to reach the people to whom God sent you? We hope it has been fruitful. Today, let us reflect on our response to the people that God sent to us. Let the story of the man born blind in today's gospel be our guide. Jesus healed the man born blind and sent him to wash in the pool of Siloam. It became the talk of the town, with the Pharisees taking offense at it. They did not consider it a godly event because the healing was done on a Sabbath, when according to the law, no work should be done. The Pharisees questioned the man relentlessly until they had him thrown out of the synagogue. In the light of our reflection today, what is interesting is the speech of the man. Sometimes we act like the Pharisees. We are overly suspicious of people who do not belong to our group or share our views. Because of this, we fail to recognize the unique ways by which God is communicating with us. How do we respond to the faith experience or testimony of people who do not belong to our group? Do we listen and respond? Or do we listen with plugged ears because we are already prejudiced? As we often see in the Bible, God carries out His plan through unnoticed or ignored people. Do we see the little and insignificant people as God sees them? So this Lent, let us allow God to surprise us through the unseen people. Jesus said in the Gospel, We pray for the grace of being open to others, especially those who do not belong to our group or who differ from us. Jesus, the light of the world, will help us see and recognize the work of God in others.
We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, what causes our blindness to God's actions? Ano ang mga sanhi ng ating pagkabulag sa pagkilos ng Diyos? The second point is, who are the simple people who help us see Jesus' marvelous acts? Sino ang mga simple at payak na tao na tumutulong sa atin para makita ang magagandang gawa ni Jesus? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed. Oh